And what's up, y'all? And welcome back to another episode of that Dynamite Review Show on the Technology News Talk. And this is the Forbidden Door Pay Per View Review of 2023. I'm your host with the most, Mr. Trick Nazi. And so, and with me as always, it's my co host, Mr. Leland Benford. What's going on, bro? What is up, everybody? It is that time to talk about Forbidden Door. Man, it is always so exciting when these shows, uh, when this Forbidden Door comes up. It's such a different vibe, such a different feel from all the other like pay-per-views that they do. Forbidden Door is definitely a special one that um, I think as time go by, we're going to look forward to it more and more and more. Um, man, it was a special night. It really was. Like every every match was just really just bangers and the crowd was great. The, 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 the new set that they have looks amazing and makes the show feel that much bigger and grander uh, than ever before. So I mean, it really is just uh, it was a, it was a definitely a, one of those pay per views that I think people are going to be talking about for a couple of months. Yeah, I think for for, for Forbidden Door was a, a great pay per view, along with um the Revolution. Double Nothing was a was a mixed pay per view. So if it, if I look back at the last AEW pay per views right now, I think Revolution and Forbidden Door are the good pay per views so far. Oh yeah, facts definitely. Um, yeah, Forbidden Door was just on a it was on a whole nother level yesterday, uh, the other day. So looking forward to getting to it. Yeah, before we get into uh, Forbidden Door, quick thoughts on Revolution and Collision this week. Um, yeah, they were definitely good. Like Rampage and Collision was really good. Um, Collision, I always kind of catch collisions on Sunday morning, so I had a whole day of wrestling to watch Sunday. Um, but yeah, definitely Collision has. Collision comes, Collision feels like a true show. You know how Rampage just feels like this kind of little brother of a show? Collision is his own thing. Like, you know, AEW has have their Raw and SmackDown now. They have Dynamite and Collision, and Collision feels so different than Dynamite, the commentary team. You know, I feel like, you know, dare to say, I really feel like Collision is closer to a WWE product than Dynamite is. I feel like, you know, if, if WWE is that standard, you know, and everyone is trying to be like the big show, Collision could be on WWE TV um, as far as how it looks. Now, the, the wrestling that they do and the language that they use and the story that they do, that doesn't, you know, go, that's their own thing still. The way AEW does matches, I really enjoy. The way they tell their stories, I really enjoy. But as far as the presentation, the commentating, the stage, the production value, it really does feel like their closest show to what is an established WWE product. Yeah, and speaking of Collision, uh, Forbidden Door used the uh, Collision stage instead of I mean, Dynamite stage. I mean, why would I? Yeah, if it's already set up, you might as well use it. I ain't about to tear that big thing down. Hey, keep it up there. Yep. And um, to kick off uh, for Forbidden Door during the um, the zero hour, we had a a eight man tag. Yeah, with uh, Swerve Strickland, uh, Brian Cage, and the Gates of Agony defeating Rocky Romero, Chuck Taylor, Trip Barrera, and El Desperado. Um, pretty good action pack fun you know, with some false finish uh, there. But everyone had their chance to show off their signature move there, but um. I think it was just more for Shore Strickland to uh to, to get his win up after after his loss to um uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi uh, at Collision. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I could definitely see that. Also about that zero hour, they 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 changed um the format. Remember on the last pay per view, they kind of had that WWE panel with Big Show and um, Stokely Hathaway and everyone talking. This. This pay per view now is just Renee and RJ City in the ring talking um, instead. So kind of like they they scrapped that kind of um, that that panel kind of thing they were going with. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, we had the RH Women's World Champion Athena defeating Billy Starts in the Owen Hart Cup uh, tournament match. 
Um, this was a very hard hitting back and forth match with uh, Adida advancing to the semifinals, and she will be facing Willie Nightingale, who beat uh, Nyla Rose in the first round. So that that match will be announced at a later date. So um, if you've been keeping up on on Ring of Honor TV, you see that Athena is on a whole another level, despite the strong effort from um from the ATO uh Bad Billy Starks. Oh yeah, definitely. It was great to see Athena on, you know, on the pay-per-view. It was great to see her on TV again. Um I know she's, you know, Ring of Honor right now and I'm kind of sad about that cuz I don't watch Ring of Honor um as much, but I'm a big Athena fan. Um so, but it was great to see her. She looked great. You know, at first I didn't feel like the crowd was on it too much, but she was able to pull them in. So by the end of it, you know, it was definitely a good opener um, for the show. But I'm glad to see her advance in the Owen Cup as well. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, we go to El uh, Pedrado defeating uh, Stu Grayson. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing these two better out again. They were really well in the ring. Both men got solid reactions from the crowd in um in Canada. So uh this was definitely a strong win to show that um to headline the upcoming um G1 climax for um uh, for, for for New Japan. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and that's that, again one of the best parts about for for Ben and Dora is just seeing a lot of these new Japan guys come over, um, and, and do what they love to do for this new crowd. Um, I know it's got to be a little different from like what they're used to in New Japan as far as the audience goes, but you can tell a lot of these guys really get into it, and it's really good when the audience there um know a lot of these new japan guys and know a lot of their kind of gimmick and know their cause because it just makes them feel like that big of a star um so this show is definitely a great one for the for that wrestling fan who also watches the new japan which you got to respect new japan man they're, they're a great promotion yeah and then the final match on the pre-show we had uh uh taganga and uh tarahash uh bill ben bush Defeating uh, Kyle Fletcher, Jeff Cobb, and TJ, uh, TJP. Um, in the first few minutes, uh, this turned into a solid uh, little sprint to end zero hour. Um, Tahasha uh, didn't get to show up much uh, as the match as he should, but um, Takaga, who got a big hit uh, with his finisher, and the crowd was really behind the LW Del uh, Japan trio there. Oh yeah, definitely. They really, they really was behind. Um, and, I, and I, again, going back, I love when the crowd is behind these New Japan guys. Um, and we'll talk about one match where they were definitely for the New Japan guy over the uh, AEW guy coming up later. Um, but yeah, the I love it when these crowds get behind these guys because it makes them feel more at home and makes them want to perform even more. Yeah, absolutely. So that was your zero hour. And then now to open up the uh, the main show, we had MJF defeating Hiroshi Tanahashi to retain the AEW world title. Now, Tanahashi was kind of uh, felt a little off during his uh, his match with Sir Strickland at Collision. But um, but uh, but Sunday, he worked a lot better with MJF here. So um, you are we already know that MJF was not going to lose here. But um, yeah. Despite that, yeah, they, uh, this was a pretty good, solid um uh, opener. But um, once MJF win, he had, like he was out of there, and now uh, you even saw the 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 back of his robe where he said, "Uh, New Japan is an indie show." So once he won, he just got on a jet plane and got out of there and go to uh whatever dynamite is gonna be on Wednesday, and uh, and I know he's gonna be wrestling on the upcoming uh Collision show. For sure, for sure. Also, let's just call out NJF's ring attire that said New Japan is an indie. <laughs> I think that was hilarious how you've been talking about these guys. Um, but yeah, this was definitely a great, uh, it was a good match. Uh, you know, you got this veteran in the ring with NJF. Um, and he they still put on a really good match. I love it when MJF sails, like he'll do a move to hurt a guy, but it ups hurting him. So he's screaming in pain. 
I think that's a big part of his um, persona. He also, in that match, did one of Ric Flair's classic bumps. The get thrown into the turnbuckle, hop over the turnbuckle, run immediately to the opposite turnbuckle, get on it only to be tossed off. I think I've only seen Ric Flair hit that jump, that top rope crossbody twice. Every other time his opponent is there to throw him off the top turnbuckle. And I thought that was a really cool move from MJF to do that classic Ric Flair bump off the top turnbuckle. So kudos to MJF on that one. Yeah. Um the the more I see um MJF does the uh, the Ric Flair story, I think he is now the how I say it, the Ric Flair and Jeff Jarrett uh the modern era right now. Yeah, I mean, because that strut, a lot of a lot of like Midwest guys or Mid-South guys did that strut. You know, I think it became more popular with Ric Flair, but it also again Jeff Jarrett, but you know, Ric Flair is that much of more of a star, I think. Um, but yeah, that that strut is an iconic, it's synonymous with Southern wrestling. Um and it's good that MJF is a student of these guys. And he is trying to be the Ric Flair of today. And, you know, arguably, like, I think with a lot of people, like, with wrestlers today, you can you can, you can talk about, like, their go-to moves, like Kenny Omega, the V-Trigger, uh, You Can't Escape, and all these other kind of calls out. Ric Flair didn't really have that type of stuff. He had the chop, and he had the finger four and the power driver. But a lot of his stuff was bumps. A lot of his stuff that people know him for was taking these kind of bumps. Um, and I think that's what MJF brings to the table is that he has his go-to moves, but he has these bumps that make the other guy look good, but also make him look good at the same time. Yep. And then um, CM Punk defeated uh, Kojima. In an Owen Hunt uh, ter- uh, tournament of uh, 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 first round match, um, man, the reaction that CM Punk had <laughs> in Canada, it reminds me of the 1997's Bret Hart, like um, where he's beloved in Canada, but he gets yeah. in the states, and then same thing goes for Shawn Michaels, where he loves in yep. the states, but he gets booed in uh, in Canada. So that's how that's why I'm feeling like for for CM Punk here, and um. He did some very huge thing in the match. He even did the um, I can't say the Hulk Hogan version. I gotta say the Hollywood Hulk Hogan version let drop. So he did that. And um uh Kojima was really got the crowd behind him. He was yeah. a very close moments. But in the end, we knew Punk was not gonna lose here. This was just uh the show if Punk could really go in um uh, in a singles match because the last two matches he's had was tag team matches. So this right. was basically to see uh, if Punk can go in a one-on-one match, which he did really good. And um, even uh, Kojima looked really strong, even in defeat. So um, Punk moves on. So we are waiting to see he will face the winner of either Samoa Joe or oh. Roger Strong, which I said so, but it'll, it'll, in the semifinals, it will be Samoa Joe and CM Punk in the semifinals. Yeah, that'd be, I mean, I, honestly, Roger Strong or, CM, or, or Samoa Joe would be great matches against CM Punk. Um I I would say that so what I was talking about earlier was you know there was a moment in the show where the crowd was more for a New Japan guy than an AEW guy and this is that moment Canada really let CM Punk have it. Now we know how Chicago treated him. We know how Toronto treated him. We can't wait to see where they're at next week to see how they treat him and how how it's gonna go. Is he the John Cena of AEW? You know what I'm saying? So um, is he that guy that everyone just boos, but he's technically a baby face and all that type of stuff? We'll see kind of how that that path road goes. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, we go to the uh, the Fatal 4-Way for the uh, AEW International title. And uh, Orange Cassie, of course, he retained his title against uh, Shibata. Uh, Zach Sabre Jr. and Daniel Garcia. And um, this was a pretty good spread, damn fun uh, match at one. And um, with this win, Cassidy has now 25 title defenses, which ties Jay Cargill uh, in her TBS title reign. So this was an absolute fun action-packed match. 
with a nice callback at the end to show respect between Cassie and Shibata, whose friendship started uh, at last year's show. So, um, but um, I think that was awesome. Yeah, but I think at the end of this, we'll get separate one-on-one matches uh, with uh, Zach Sabre Jr. going against uh, Orange Cassidy and then Shibata going against uh, Daniel Garcia with their respective titles. I can see that for sure. Or a triple threat. Between who? Shibata, Zach Sabre Jr., and Cassidy. I can see that, but um, I think um, Daniel Garcia might want to get that pure championship back. I think that. True, true, true. I mean, we always see where it goes, but, but Shibata is awesome. These guys had a great match. Zach Sabre Jr. was awesome. Um, Garcia with that goofy dance that he started in Detroit. I was there when that dance started, guys. I can't believe it's actually still going. But I'm not going to lie, it was really funny. Um, seeing him trying to get in some action with Zack Sabre Jr. and then Shibata and they, them pushing him out and him trying to get in. They won't let him finish his dance and he finishes. It, it was a good match. I mean, it had just enough little comedy bits, um, but also some really good hard hitting moments. This show, by the way, this whole show was the night of a thousand chops. OK, people were getting chopped. With everything left and right, this was a strong style night, and that's why I love when New Japan comes to AEW because we get those strong style moments. And we're we're just getting started. I think now uh, we just finished off the first hour, so I think we're getting off to the second hour. I I assume so. We got um, Santana defeating. Um, uh, Jungle Boy Jack Perry, but uh, that was the, the that match there. That wasn't the whole story. The story no. was the end of the match where mm-hmm. Jungle Boy turned on uh Hook. Now I'm glad that I glad I'm glad they did it tonight instead of trying to tease us uh when it when it's gonna happen. So um so with this heel turn, and I think we kind of mentioned this before, um. Mm-hmm. I think if he joins back up with um, Christian Cage and Lucasaurus, they might reform. But this time, the Dark Express. The dark. Gotcha, the dark Jurassic Express. Yeah, seeing him go heel, we've been calling it. They've been putting in a little crew. They've been putting in clues here and there. We're in all black. He was ripping away at the Luchador's mask, which is definitely a heel move. Um, MJF saying, you don't have what it takes to go all the way. Um, so for him to go heel last night on Hook, and then for him to revel in the blues, I was like, wow, this is the first time Jungle Boy's been heel. Um, he's been a straight baby face this whole time. So it is going to be interesting to see Evil Jack Perry, man, like, and see how this goes. Um, I hope his song doesn't change. Speaking of which, we did have a couple of song changes tonight that we're looking forward to talking about. Um, but yeah, man, he's heel, which is crazy. Blue he was like a, like a true and true baby face. Now he's here. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah. And speaking of song changes, uh, I think uh, the Black Book Comic Card, they had a song change too. And speaking of yep. that, um, they uh, they got the they got the loss here uh, at Forbidden Door as the Hey Man Adam Page, the Young Bucks, Eddie Keenson, and uh, uh, Tomoro Ishii. Defeated John Mossy, uh, Claudio Casanova, Willie Uda, uh, Kose Dikesha, and Sada Yuboto in a, um, a 10 man tag. To no one's surprise, this match was loaded with hard hitting strikes and high impact moves. You can name it. And it also shows that Kingston is willing to take a bullet for uh, for Mossy, even though he was on the side that he don't like. But um, but you see the common enemy uh, there. Uh, this fight for the other, but uh, either way around, um, the bus were upset about Kingston say uh, shoving Moxie out of the way of the super kick, and then after the match, um, Kingston uh, was also having none of their companions uh, complaints on on that. But um, but the whole match here was uh, from start to finish was a lot of fun, and now yeah. it's gonna go compared to um in three weeks. Uh, uh, for Blood and Guts in Boston. 
This match was everything that I thought it was going to be. All the New Japan guys did great. Um, I mean, Takashi, the way he hit my man. Oh, dude, it was some hard-hitting moments in this match. I didn't get too much the Eddie Kingston taking a bullet for John Moxley. I didn't understand that too much because they were just slapping each other in the chest as hard as they can. Um, but good storytelling, not the least, like, you know, kept my interest saying, like, huh? But this show, this match right here, I already knew it was going to be a banger. But it was even that much better than I thought. Um, Young Bucks looked at good. Super kick parties all around. Um, the new music. I think they should still introduce some wild thing. You know, and I'm so used to hearing wild thing when they come out that I think it should be like a dark version of wild thing. Uh, but their new music really sets the tone for their group. You know, not everyone is singing and dancing with them now when they come out. It's more like, oh, here, here come um, Blackpool Combat Club, you know, the, the strike community. You know, it does set a different tone with everybody. Yeah. And um, uh, like, like I mentioned uh, uh, before, um, that uh, the that Blood and Guts has been announced for uh, the, Ju uh, the July 19th edition of dynamite which will be in uh in, in boston so um but we are going to be uh missing out on kenny omega and brian danielson which we'll get to those uh why in an um in their respective matches in a second but um i think we might get four on four so with the black book combat club you're going to get john mosley cardio casanova uh willie yuda and Kosei Takesha. And on the other side, um, you got Hey Man Adam Page and the Young Butts. And then for the fourth person, it's either going to be um, Eddie Kingston or uh, uh, Kato Ibushi as their for fourth member. But we'll see how that goes in, in the next three weeks. Oh, yeah, that's that's going to be something to look forward to. And then uh, moving on, uh, Tony Storm. Uh, defeated Will Nightingale to retain the AEW Women's uh, 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 Women's World Title. This definitely felt like a um a TV match rather than a um a pay per view match. As uh, this was the same formula where you see the Outcast try to interfere with her, which was fine. But um, it just to really show you that um how great of a challenger was Will Nightingale despite the disadvantage that she had. But um. That, that this was a pretty good uh, solid match for these ladies here, but um, I, now Willie Nightingale just had to uh, shift her focus to the um to the Owen Hart Cup tournament. Yeah, I really like this match with uh, Willow Nightingale and Tony Storm. I think this is like Willow's like best match. Um, Willow is definitely becoming um, a, a top kind of you know. Uh, women's wrestler in AEW should be coming someone to kind of really take notice to. I think that might be like, you know, her, their Bailey in a way, you know, that real bubble gum, bubble face. Um, but yeah, this was a really good match between them. They, it was hard hitting, you know, um, you know how sometimes it is with the women's matches, they come on, um, and, you know, people might go get popcorn or something during that moment. If you did that, you were silly because you missed, um some good action in this match from these from these female wrestlers because they really it was one of the best matches like i said with them so far yeah and then um we move on to what i think was the match of the night will osprey defeated kenny omega to win the iwgp united states heavyweight title and oh my god uh, they even showed a video package, uh, which was uh, really, really, really good. But um, so someone was in a match when um, when Will Ospreay did the driver on Kenny Omega. I thought that man was dead. He got hit on his head, but uh, oh man, he, he was still able to, uh, uh, to 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 continue the match. Like, oh my god, this was absolutely phenomenal. Just right up there with their match they had at um at Re at Wrestle Kingdom. 
when you thought that this match was going to be over, you had so many amazing near falls and the crowd was going absolutely wild. But um, my only complaint about this match is that why would Don Callis go back to the ring after he was ejected so early? But other than that, but man, this was so unreal. And if they ever do a round three, sign me up. Yeah. Man, do a round three at Wembley. That's what I want to see. Do a round three at Wembley, man. That's going to be something major. Do yeah. a round three at Wembley, please, because that's going to be – um, yeah, that's what I want to see. Now, this match was everything that we thought it was going to be in much, much more. I mean, these guys really uh, – I mean, they're – they're the same person in a way, you know? Um, I mean, these guys, they, they they can go on and on. They seem to never get tired. They do amazing moves, have great timing. I mean, that those two guys wrestling is just, it's just, it's just a beautiful thing to watch. Um, you know, congratulations to Will Ospreay. In his post-match scrum, he said he loved having everybody yell at him and scream at him. I think Will Ospreay is definitely ready for to be on TV every week. He's looking for that that kind of exposure. You know, I think AEW does have exposure that New Japan can't get, right? You know, so and I'm great that I'm happy that Will Ospreay is looking over at the AEW side and not, you know, the WWE side, not no hate to WWE, but you know, talent tend to change a little bit when they go over there. Tony Khan usually allows them to keep their persona and keep their style um you know and we don't have to worry about a repackaging type thing so i, I i'm happy that he's looking at AEW as his next potential home um but it would be great to see him on my tv every once a week that would be freaking amazing um he just now stopped doing indie shows so he's looking to kind of up his stock and i think he's ready for that 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 tv audience yeah uh, absolutely and then uh Man, this is definitely um I'm definitely putting that uh, that match on my so far in my top ten. Um, uh, it could change yeah. throughout the rest of the year, but yeah. um, yeah, uh, but, but, but for right now, that's, that's top, top tier 10. for the year. Yeah, top tier for the year. Um, I would say, man, you know, they they said that it's gonna be Forbidden Door DLC for Fight Forever. Please let Will Ospreay be a playable character. That would be. That would be greatly appreciated. We'll see as uh, Fight Forever will be released on Thursday. Also, Don Callis. Everyone hates Don Callis. People were screaming Kenny Omega. People were springing, sing, uh, screaming for Will Ospreay. But they all agree that Don Callis is a piece of crap. So that was something that everyone came together on um, and, and, and was in full, full alignment on, that Don Callis is a piece of of crap. Um, also, ref, you kicked him out. Why did you let him back in without telling him to leave back out? What was that all about? I ain't gonna come. I ain't gonna get kicked out and come back and then have no consequences still. That was, what you doing, ref? Get it together. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, we move on to our, our next trio match with uh, Steam, Darby Allen, and Naruto uh, defeating Chris Jericho, Sammy Gavar, and Moro Suzuki. And um, despite the uh, the very scary looking moments, especially the the table spot, uh, this was yeah. absolutely fun and chaotic, bro. Uh, most people still can't believe that the punishment that Steen takes at his age, but right. um, he continues to be the um, the Undertaker of of the of AEW and continue to defy all the odds during his run. But um, anytime you put Darby Allen and Sting in a tag team match, you know they was not gonna lose. So. They will still be undefeated there, there. But um, we did yeah. we did get to see the face off finally between Sting and Chris Jericho, and also with uh, Sting and Moro Suzuki in the ring as well. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, Sting looked great last night, man. It's surprising that he's still doing all this stuff. Um, I mean, he really just loves the business, you know. Um, I think Jericho and him will make a good last match for Sting, you know, because that's somebody who kind of, you know, was on the same roads with him and same companies and 
you know, I think that would be a nice send off. Or they might bring in a different legend to have a last match. Or it might be, uh, I don't want to see Darby do it. Uh, you know, like that kind of that that teacher and student kind of relationship. Um, but no, this was definitely a really a really fun match. I think the crowd was a little kind of in reserve. Um, for this match, because what they just witnessed with Omega, I do believe AEW need to learn the value of putting like a comedy segment in between some of those bigger matches, because it can get tiring when you go from such a banger of a match right into another match that you that you're excited for. But the last match, I'm just just physically tired as an audience member. So I do think AEW needs to learn how to put in those segments or those shop AEW commercials. Just give me some time. Give me a palate cleanser in between a banger of a match like Omega and Osprey to a banger of a match like, you know, this this the six man, you know, here. So I, I do think they need more time in between. It did look like Sammy Guevara did get hit in the, he landed on Sting and I think his tooth got chipped. So I'm pretty sure Sammy Guevara had to get some dental work done after this match. Even when he was his pose, his teeth looked a little off. Um, so, you know, he kind of landed a little wrong, but um, that's how it is. I remember when Cesaro had his two front teeth pushed all the way into his gums. That was gnarly. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I would say AEW needs to learn the value of putting some segments in between these big matches just to give the crowd a little bit of a break before they got to start cheering again because I think they were in reserve waiting for the um, Akata and Danielson match. Yeah. And then um, before we go to uh, the main event, um, I, I, I kind of understand what, what you meant there. Like, they need to give um, – Every time they finish the match, they give it some breathing room. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you said, yeah. like it, it's just uh, too much at um at one time. But I understand where, where you're coming from there. But um, during one of those breaks, we got an announcement that they are doing all out this year, and uh, it will happen on uh, Labor Day weekend, and it will be at the United Center in Chicago. Man, I mean AEW in Chicago. Yeah, Chicago becoming uh, AEW's uh familiar city. So um yeah. and and I can see why because um I think uh with the every time they do an all out pay-per-view, it it'll, it always be in the Chicago area. Um same thing for um double or nothing when they go to Vegas because um because of the theme of double or nothing. So mm -hmm. I think um all out in Chicago it has become their their theme right now. So it's really smart what they've been doing, just kind of getting these territories. Like, I don't think hey, I don't think WWE has that same kind of connection to like certain places. Like AEW has connections to certain places. Like I remember, I'm, I've been I was a WWE fan for a very long time, and I always knew when they went to Chicago or when they went to Philly. You know, those crowds are always a little you know crazier. Uh, but I don't, I don't see how like like. You know, when you think about Chicago and AEW, you think about the pay-per-views they have there, CM Punk. When you, you go to New Jersey, you think about, you know, MJF. Because I think AEW does a good job connecting their stars to these territories. Um, you know, so that's that's always interesting to see when they go back to uh, Chicago. And now they're about to start a new territory with, you know, over in England. So that's going to be an exciting show. Ah, oh, TK, give me Omega and Osprey 3 in Wembley, please. Thank you. Um, anyways. Yeah, but, and, and speaking of All In, like, um, with the announcement of All Out, could All In be a, a sequel spinoff through Forbidden Door? Because I can definitely see some rematches from Forbidden Door going into All In. I can see some rematches. Oh, yeah, facts. Definitely can see that happening. Yeah, and then the main event, Brian Danielson su submits uh, uh Okada, but it went to everyone's surprise. Yeah, and um, now we all know that that this match was was the main event, and uh, as Caliber said, this was a dream match. But uh, people are saying like, oh, like, why didn't Will Osprey and Kenny Omega uh a main event the show if that was gonna be on a good like like you guys gotta have to understand like. 
they was marketing, uh, like I said, they was marketing Brian and, and Okada as the as the dream match uh, uh, for the main event. Now, was it was it a bad main event? No. Was it as great as um Will Ospreay or Kenny Omega? No. But was it a great match itself? Yes. So that's what people gotta gotta kind of uh, understand here, like uh, when it comes to like what well, marking like which one is the main event and which one is like the co-main event and all, all that other stuff. So like this was an absolute uh solid main, uh, main event here. So um, and to say to say that this absolutely delivered as well. But like I said, the crowd did not expect the finish or uh that the, what they got when Omega had submitted, but. The commentary did a good job explaining that if Okada did not tap, he will risk long-term injury, perhaps being out of the the G1 Climax tournament. Because like whoever wins the um the G Master Climax tournament will get a shot at the uh, at the IWGP Heavyweight Heavyweight Championship. So that was smart on on Okada's hand. So he lives to fight another day. But but in the end, um, Brian Danielson won the match. And like I said, I feel like the, they will have a round two at all in. But um, as far as um, Danielson, he will. They, they put out a tweet that he will be out for six to eight weeks. And yeah. this go back to what I said for um for blood and guts. So with Brian Danielson will be out, and also whatever um injuries that uh, Kenny Omega had, he's gonna be out too. So uh, even though we were supposed to get five on five. But now it's going to be for four on four when it comes to um the the the, the, the to 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 blood and guts. So, but um, but you know, I see a new kind of way of like booking these guys in the AEW era right now because I feel like they Brian Danielson he doesn't wrestle too much on Dynamite or Rampages, but when he goes out there, he like you know it's like full contact. He's swinging on these guys and they're going back and forth back and forth um and they're going full of contact and then um you know so it's like it's different when you know they're out there every day doing this but when they kind of make them the special items kind of like how brock lesnar was and he just a specialty kind of thing right um but they go out there they really go all the way in you know because these guys were going at it in that in that main event definitely surprised that okada tap um you know, but you can even see Brian holding it onto his arm, not being able to use his right arm. Um, you know, because these guys was really, you know, hammering at each other. Okada is just a great ingering performer. He's such he's just so clean, so precise, so quick, big, but like also like you know, a lot of emotion. He just he's such an interesting performer. Um, also Brian Danielson coming out to what the final countdown. That song was expensive. So they are spending some money to get him that song, man. But it was really a great surprise for the audience to have him come out to what he always come out in, in the indies. So he came out in the final countdown. And that was a great start to that match. Yeah, he better get the rights to that song. He better get the rights to that song. All right, they got him, and that mother's not cheap. Uh, but no, this match was definitely a shock and surprise Really well done. I don't think anyone in the audience saw that coming. Um, I thought Okada was going to win this one. Um, and I do hope to see these guys wrestle again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, a great main event. Um, uh, definitely uh, overall a great pay-per-view. Um, do I think it's better than last year? Um, I think last year is kind of slight better than this year. But, but, but like overall, in terms of like, the quality of the matches, uh, uh, both, uh, each one was good as well. But um, uh, yeah. But um, uh, now we move forward to All In, which I think is going to be a spinoff sequel to Forbidden Door here. Because like when we get to All Out, then it's going to be a, just a full solid AEW um at that pay per view matches. So I think with All In, we might get more people from. The other side and uh and new people coming in for that for the Wendy show and uh, uh so yeah but um right now we focusing on blood and guts which is coming up in uh July nineteenth in Boston uh and then um I don't know they um they have nothing in um in August because um 
I think um, after All In and All Out, that's when they do Grand Slam. And November is for Full Gear. And I think that's pretty much it as far as like um, pay-per-view and special show-wise. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, yeah, I think um, I think this year's Forbidden Door I like more than last year's, only probably because of the new set, the new money that they got thrown around, the new look to it, new commentating team. So this one just felt like a new direction for AEW, um, and the matches were just complete bangers. Everyone getting smacked left and right. Um, but yeah, this show was um, this show was epic, man. I can't wait to see what they do at Wembley, man. I can't wait to hear the crowd. I mean, this is like going to be a major moment for AEW um, coming up. I mean, I think last night was a major moment, you know, but I think Wembley is going to be even a bigger moment for them guys. And, you know, this may be the start of their kind of WrestleMania type thing. Um, But just to see them in this sea of people and, you know, outside kind of arena, um, and seeing these characters that we've been watching, these wrestlers we've been watching for the last couple of years, I'm just really proud of AEW to, to, just to keep watching them grow and grow and grow. And I'm gonna be there Thursday to pick up my copy of Fight Forever and have fun with that game for the next year or two. Yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, yeah, great, um, uh, pay per view for Forbidden Door. Can't wait to uh, all the stuff that we mentioned coming up. And um, and with that being said, anything else you want to wrap up before we wrap up? Anything else you want to plug in? I'm excited for Wednesday. I'm excited for Saturday. Saturdays are all right for fighting. Um, yeah, man, I think AEW is about to skyrocket um, to bigger heights. I really do see them kind of growing. Their their presentation is just so clean. They're they're firing on all cylinders um, at the moment. So I want to see them continue to go and grow but um no man nothing to talk about right now man empathy is coming out um we still got that we still got that coming um you know everything is just uh one of those processes things but empathy is still coming out this summer um so definitely go follow us on facebook and our instagram but yeah man that was it man just a banger of a show yep and um with that being said he's leland and i'm trico and we're signing off and we'll see y'all soon Peace.